Andrew and Paul, and welcome back to Carry On Chronicles, My London Experience, Part 2. In this episode, I'm going to take you around some of the iconic British monuments, some of the sites that you may or may not have already seen. But I'm also going to take you behind the scenes on the London Spring Comic Con, where I was actually able to talk to a few people that I hadn't seen in a while, and some new ones. But before I went anywhere, I had to go eat. So I just came out of a spot called Wagamama, which is a great spot. I love this spot. Uh, it has vegan options as well. It's, they have chain around London, different spots around London um, and South London. But if you come to London, it's a really good eat for quick food, tasty food, chicken, noodles, different stuff like that. So uh, now I'm uh, at Green Park. Green Park is a uh, beautiful park. London is full of parks. Hyde Park, Green Park, uh, there's a lot of them around. And uh, this is actually the, uh, the tube stop that you would actually get off if you're going to Buckingham Palace, which is where I'm gonna take a little trip to. Obviously this is not an unfamiliar site to many of you. that's uh, been around for many, many years. And uh, it will continue to be a, a very central part of the UK. And its monarchy is a uh, staple diet of that. So again, as I mentioned, uh, full of parks. This is St. James's Park. It's, uh, it has a beautiful lake in the middle. And it's along the mall, we call it the mall. And uh, uh, we're on the way to Westminster now, where the Houses of Parliament are, where right now they're having a lot of discussions on the uh, Ukraine-Russia issue. The Houses of Parliament and Westminster Abbey are the bells that you can hear behind me. Uh, the Princess Di and Charles got married behind me. And obviously the Houses of Parliament to the other side there where all the decisions and the laws are made. So they say. And you can see the London Eye slowly rotating with a bird's eye view of London. It seemed at the time when it was built to be an eyesore, but it does have a fantastic view of the city when you go up there. Well, here we are at the London Eye. And that's a lot of people in line. A lot of people would go up there and be gradually turned around for about, I think it's about half an hour or so it goes around, maybe a little bit more. They let people on, it gradually goes on. It's a constant slow, slow turn all the way around. But as you saw, a lot of people are very, very excited about being up there and, and getting a bird's eye view of London. So what you see here is uh, one walk bridge that actually connected the south to the north shore. So here I am walking on the bridge and uh, obviously you can see the rail tracks next to me. But the interesting fact about this was uh, when they opened it, yeah, so they really had to sort of make a few adjustments, let's say. London is full of amazing sights and sounds, as well as statues and buildings and iconic squares everywhere. As the uh, night is uh, disappearing on us, uh, I'm in Albemarle Street, which is parallel to uh, Bond Street. And uh, this was a street where I used to come out occasionally. I remember a dear friend of mine, Howard, uh, passed on a few years ago. He, uh, <laughs> him and I actually went for breakfast one time and I double parked my car in this street. And uh, I was, uh, as you can tell, I said, fairly narrow street and I double parked my car and I went in to get something to eat with him quickly because there's nowhere to park and uh, suddenly I see a police officer giving me a ticket so I rush out I think the police officer either the police officer or a ward one of the two and uh, he said all he saw me do from the window of the cafe was this I was giving the guy a hard time well, you could do that when you're younger. I always feel like you're infallible. Anyway, 
let's take a look at Bond Street. Bond Street is uh, is where I used to work, and it's a very, very nice street. Now, just behind me here, uh, it's all changed now. It's also different at Bond Street, but there was uh, this is where I used to work for a pharmaceutical company, uh, doing their custom pricing, the computer inputs and stuff back in the 1980s. No, early. What we're talking about early 80s, like 82, 83. And now behind me is where I actually used to go and get sandwiches uh, for, for uh, at lunchtime. But now it's all changed. So let's take a look down there. Uh, a lot of people come out here after work. And it's the uh, bar behind me. Right now there's nobody here. Corbani or Corobin. And there's another great one I know of called Hush. So now I'm in New Bond Street. It's uh, very popular, so right next to Bond Street's uh, Stoop Tube Station where I'm going to go and take the tube. All right, so I'm just coming out of a place called The Shed. Uh, nice little spot, uh, kind of Michelin rated as well. Uh, good little food. It's uh, just off of um, Kensington High Street. Ooh, I'm falling on the floor. It's off Holland Park Road, I lied. My friend just told me that, my friend Peter. Anyway, uh, this is where it is, and you can see where the food's actually pretty good, so if you're visiting London, it's a fabulous little spot to be in. So, as promised, the Spring London Comic Con Convention, where I got the chance to meet up with some friends, took a few weird and wonderful photos, and gave a talk on stage about the meaning of life, or something like that. Plus, I interviewed for my podcast, The Hollywood Experience, a couple of the doctors from the long-running Doctor Who series who I actually knew and hadn't seen in a while. Sylvester McCoy and Colin Baker. And I got to see a Wookiee or two. So, uh, end of a, a day at the con. I went out for a little drink, eat at this place called Busaba, uh, which is slightly above me. It's a bank hot time, but it's kind of a different time. Some of the food is really good. Um, service was a little bit off ordered uh, two beers at one point and uh, they never came and then ordered two teas and they never came <laughs> so um i've had those off the menu but uh, otherwise good food uh, ambulance was nice so uh the strip here at uh, westfield has some nice restaurants but uh seem to do good food the indian restaurant was totally booked so we couldn't go there but maybe next time all right see you So now I'm at Victoria Station uh, after having a little bit of a problem. I'm, driving, I'm going off to Italy now, so we'll look at that. But uh, went to Victoria Station this morning. Uh, sorry, I went to Waterloo Station this morning because I had a, to put an audition down. Uh, I ran, I had a 10 o'clock. I was gonna get at 11 o'clock out of there, back down, get an 11.24 from Victoria. Bought my ticket beforehand, was all prepared. Got to the station at Waterloo and the ticket didn't work. The ticket didn't work again. Walked into the... Uh, the guy and I said, excuse me, this isn't working. And he says, what is it? He said, well, you bought it an hour and a half ago. I said, well, does that matter? It doesn't matter. He said, well, it says it's been used. I said, well, I, how can it be used? I'm going to Gatwick. That's like an hour and a half, two hours away. It, it doesn't make sense. How did I, he's like, no, this is this has been used. I said, let's check the machine. So he goes, checks the machine. He said, where did you buy it? I said, I bought it here. He said, well, it was an hour, two hours ago. I said, it doesn't matter where it's two hours ago. It's still, it's still valid. He said, no, but it says it's been used. So he calls his supervisor. The supervisor says something. It takes nine or five minutes, ten minutes. And then he gets to the machine. He says, listen, I'm going to let you through this time, but don't do it again. I said, what do you mean don't do it again? The machine's wrong. He said, the machine's wrong, is it? All right, buy your own ticket. I said, what do you mean buy my own ticket? I've just spent 22 pounds on this ticket. And he said, well, it's unvalid, you've used it. I said, I haven't used the ticket. Finally, he let me through and I missed my train. I missed the other train. So now I'm hoping I'm gonna get the plane. So uh, now I'm on the train and uh, another error. There's uh, the train got delayed. And so they told us to get onto another train and then We've just been told that this train is going to terminate halfway there because there are trespassers on the line. We might not make this flight. We'll just have to see, won't we? Uh, more updates coming soon. Missed it. Yep, missed it. We got here with half an hour, just over half an hour to spare. They wouldn't let us through, even though we would probably would have made the gate quite easily. We had no bags, but they wouldn't let us come in. So they now just said we have to buy another flight. So I have to buy a flight for tomorrow. 
and um, I'm rather upset with British Rail. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Carry On Chronicles. I'm Adrian Paul. Please share and like this so that we can get you more content and more interesting places that I go and see. Our next episode, well, I was hoping to go to Florence. Well, you'll have to see what happened on that one, won't you? See you next time. Take care.